Hey everybody, welcome to Fawin Channel. We're gonna do something a little different today. Instead of our normal thing where I try to survive or I just play through a game or have a guest on the game, we're gonna do a new segment I'm gonna start calling Fawin's First Impression. It's basically just a review type dealie. Uh, XCOM 2 just came out. I really liked the one that came out a couple years ago. Never got a chance to try the 1960s one, but I'm very excited to check out XCOM 2. So this video is going to be what I think of it, whether or not I would recommend it to you guys to go out and get, if it's worth the full tag price or what. So let's get into it. Now, going just through the options real quick. I turned the volume down just for you guys. <laughs> but something that was uh, not present in the original one that I thought was kind of cool was you can match your soldier's language to their nationality. For example, this guy right here, he's German. So he would speak German. So I thought that was kind of cool. It wasn't present in the original game. They may have came out with like a DLC or a mod or something to do that in, in the XCOM 1, if you will. But just to have it in it is actually really cool for video options I like that they actually enable frame rate smoothing which you don't see a lot in a lot of games I hope that something becomes a little more prevalent in new games just because some people might have the uh, the equipment you know the hardware to run everything but then you st still might get uh, some frame rate issues a prime example of that is Rome Total War 2 where I, I my everything is maxed out I have the more than the hardware to run it and everything everything's up to date but frame rate just drops like crazy for no reason so I'm kinda glad that they have the option to do it graphics they went crazy on the graphics which I thought was pretty cool it's very detailed you can even mess with like uh, shadows at the view everything I'm just going with what is suggested to me it's just auto tech graphic settings again see I'm just gonna go with whatever suggested to me most games nowadays do that as well uh, do 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 show enemy health there's something else I want to show you guys oh um I don't remember this being a thing in the in XCOM 1 but you can change your key bindings which is actually pretty cool uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments of whether or not you could do that in the original XCOM. And by original, I don't mean the one from the 90s, I mean the one from a few years ago. But I don't recall whether or not you could actually change your key bindings if you want. I'm not going to for the sake of this review, but it's something that's really cool, especially if you just want to be able to hit a couple buttons and just move on to the next guy. Very handy if they still do the same multiplayer that they did in XCOM 1. Because in the multiplayer for XCOM 1, you only have, I think it's like two minutes or a minute and a half to move everybody and do everything before it'll switch to the other person's turn. Kind of like, uh, like speed chess kind of thing. Now, this is, everything that I'm seeing with you right now, from this point forward, is going to be just as new to me as it is to you. That's one of the reasons why I haven't seen the multiplayer just yet. Um... But if I can find a couple of buddies to play with, we might do a Fawns and Friends. But we will see. So we're just going to save and exit. So let's... Oh, there's a character pool. Let's check out what that is. Oh! Oh, cool! Oh, that is so cool! Okay, so... In the original XCOM... Uh, again, original as in XCOM 1 of this new series... You could, you would get assigned like random people and you could change their name and what they looked like and this, that, and any other, but it was always a different random group anytime you restarted the game. I think the character pool is you get to create it right off the bat and then you get to keep them um, no matter what playthrough you have. So say, for example, I want to do a uh, uh, Will Follow and Survive type deal. I can pre-make the characters, and no matter how many different games of XCOM I play, I have those characters in the character pool that I can pull in, which is pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. I like the fact that he's Ukrainian, but his voice is American English 4, and as you guys saw earlier, I told it to do its native accents. Oh wait, I don't want that. 
Uh, delete section. Okay. So that's actually kind of cool. I might play with that a lot later. Okay. Let's see. Options. We already went through the options. All right. Let's do a new game. Hmm. Veteran. Whatever. Start game. Ooh. Even though I told it to smooth it out, I'm still seeing some uh, some frame rate drops. I'm seeing that it's currently running 30 frame rates per second instead of 60 as it probably should be. So as far as the plot goes, it seems like the world is under a new world order of some type. Oh, is this going to be like a Rebel Alliance versus Empire type? Two? Oh, are those tattoos or is he a... Is he an alien? Yeah. Peacekeeping forces have already made several preemptive arrests of known collaborators. Ooh. Again assures all citizens that... Okay, so it looks like, uh... If you did not save the world in XCOM 1, this is what would happen, more or less. Wait, this is just looks like the this is from the trailer going forward. Trailer going on. I'm gonna skip this, guys. If I actually end up doing a uh, let's play of this of some kind, we'll go through all that and see how it's all going down. But let's get into the actual nitty gritty. Okay, so kind of like the original one, you just start off with a couple of guys and you move them around to different points. You need to get out of sight. Grab some cover near that low wall. Copy that. Moving up. Okay. Petar. And if you have never played the original one, uh, it's basically you run into cover, you shoot, you run to the next cover, and you push forward doing whatever you need to do. Uniflag shows the selected soldier's health and access remain. <coughs> Excuse me. So usually, if you moved a certain distance, it counts as just one. If you move beyond that certain distance to your maximum distance, it counts as two. The idea is you can move the, the short distance and then still have an action point to fire. But if you move the full distance, you, you pretty much spent the entire turn just running, more or less. So... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna explain the whole thing. I'll do that in a, a let's play. But there's different types of like cover that you can get. So he wants to go. They want me to make him have full cover. Crasher two, stay close. Keep pace with Crasher one. Basically, work as a team. The tutorial is very. Uh, I wouldn't say seamless, but I I like it better so far than the first one. Oh, something's going down. Keep to the shadows until you're absolutely set. We'll only get one shot at this. See, look, now it's bumped up to 60 frames per second. I don't know what, what's going on with the frame rate. Most missions start with the squad in concealment. Okay, so this is new. In uh, the first one, the only people who were in concealment were the bad guys, and that was it. And so... You pretty much stumble around the forest or the city or the town or whatever until you've bumped into the field of view of an alien. And then it starts the whole encounter. It looks like it's the opposite this time around, which is kind of cool. Where as long as I stay out of those red squares, I could actually set up an ambush um, without them knowing it. So let's see if we can do something about that. All right, come on, Petar. Move, move, move. 
So that's kind of cool, because then you can actually sneak up on the bad guys, kind of get a, a better look at what's going on. Okay, okay. And what was your name again? I don't think I caught your name. Crasher 2, that's all I remember. <laughs> And if you're going to play a game where you're the resistance, you're going to want to be able to just, oh, sneak up on people. Uh-oh. It's a big guy. An alien guy. So we got a distraction. Ah. see. Uh, press enter or to action button. Okay. Um, so, we're going to fire. And the, whenever you fire, just like in, in the first game, you get to... It shows you the percentage that you'll actually hit the guy. So, and you can usually... I'm not sure if it'll let me do it. No, it's not. I guess I can only see the one guy. It's probably for the... Uh, tutorial section but usually I can switch between all four guys and take a look at it I do like the new bit of graphics it definitely looks more futuristic than with what was there before as well as the, the little health pips and the shield it's definitely a lot smoother looking I just wish the uh, frame rates would stick the way they should <laughs> who knows for all I know I kind of screwed myself over by putting on the uh, the frame rate smoother so maybe if I turn that off, it'll actually do the max frame rate that I would like. But let's take a shot at this guy and see what happens. Oh. Oh. That did not look like human blood coming out of that. That was like orange. Oh, and now they're going to react to whatever we did, and they're going to get cover. I just noticed something. His gun is laying there. I wonder if we can pick it up. The entire squad loses concealment when any soldier attacks an enemy, breaking windows or kick, oh, making noises, um, or a soldier is flanked or steps on a detection tile, which is those red tiles. Okay, cool. They can see you now. How about you all shoot first and celebrate later? No problem. <laughs> so now, now it doesn't matter where I move because they just know where we're at. I don't know how they know where she's at. If anything, she should still be able to get a sneak move if you ask me, but I do like this new dynamic. It's kind of cool, actually. And for the tactical combat UI, click on the highlighted area, blah, 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 blah. Um, so 60%. Can I switch in between? Oh, wait. No, I cannot. It will not let me. Wait. Oh! Oh! I was using the old buttons. That's why. But it looks like I can No, I can't. It just tells me what's... Because he's in low cover, it's minus 20-some percent. Okay, whatever. Fires the weapon. Yeah, I know that. Uh, oh. Oh. What's that? What's that symbol? You're still keeping score, right? What does that symbol mean? That's something new to me. Whoa, whoa, they got laser guns. Okay. Oh, he's moving up on me. Oh, the flank! Oh! Oh, no! Anna Ramirez was killed, so her name was Anna. Oh, man. Yeah, no, she is dead. What risk? Oh, now I want, like, revenge. Now it wants me to flank them, because when you flank somebody, they lose that cover bonus? Option four. Oh, that's reload. Ignores defense bows, and there's a high chance to score a critical hit. So there's also that, I guess. Yeah. Fires the weapons. Oh, okay. I'm really liking this game so far. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it is a lot like XCOM 1, but I like the changes that they've done so far. Little tweaks here and there I would fix, like the frame rate situation, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be patches to fix that. Oh. Is that a person? Oh, oh. She's calling reinforcements. Stop that. 
eh? Ooh, someone looks like a badass. Boarding in. Oh! You're late. What have you been doing down there? Taking in the sights. Hell are these things? They're us. At least they used to be. Uh oh. Human hybrid soldiers. Advent's reward for obedience and service. Okay. We've all heard rumors. <laughs> See, look, it's just jumped back down to like 30 frame rates. You know, maybe it's because the cutscenes are like a set frame rate. Oh, now I got new teammates. Used Q and E to rotate camera. Whoop, 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 whoop. E, E, E. Those are my Q and E sounds. All right, so they want me to move into cover. I'm on it. That sucks. Fire on that moves. What is that? What is that yellow thing? There's one now. There was a three. How many turns until something explodes? I don't know what the hand symbol is. Overwatch. Found the enemy. Yep. The main entrance is clear. We need to move on the package. What is the package? Uh oh. Central. Oh, is this the is this the, supposed to be the character that that we played as in the first game, or is this the commander or uh, central commander guy that we had last time, who would just update us on tactical situations? Oh, this is an action movie now. And you. So that's what that means. I have that many turns until I can't salvage anything. That's cool, because in the previous game, um, you would get the salvage at the end of the game. And unless you incapacitated the bad guy or the enemy, if uh, you couldn't. Otherwise, if you killed them, their weapons or salvage or whatever that you can get would break. And so you'd only have like bits and pieces rather than a whole gun to reverse engineer, for example. That's cool. Um, I'll move you in there. It's like a cyberpunk type deal now. Oh. I'm really liking the uh, the new art and graphics and stuff. I still would rather have done like a 1950s-ish kind of thing. But this will have to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, and that's that leader guy. He got some cool little, like, Mandalorian cape and stuff, too. Oh, that's right. We're Overwatch. We should be able to take a pot shot at somebody. Oh, look at that guy go down. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of this is scripted. Like, Anna was probably meant to die. But once you actually start playing these random missions that you get... Oops, sorry. Um, it's, it's anybody's game. Anybody could die. I could have missed that shot, for example. Okay, can I shoot somebody? Advent officer. I want to. I want to shoot this guy. Oh, how do I shoot that guy? It won't let me. Ah, uh, it's because it's all scripted. Because I can see too. Unless I have to actually. Oh, another example, of probably why I want to actually go through the key bindings before I do anything like this. Because I'm used to just hitting like the arrows and stuff to get around to them. But now you have to actually click their little pip. So, I'd rather get this guy. Nope, it's forced me to fire that guy. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's all scripted. <laughs> Missed. Again, it's the tutorial, so it's, it's meant to be scripted. What? Okay. Now I breach this open. All soldiers can hack certain computers, lock doors, and some other objects to gain access and temporary bonuses. Okay. Hack it. Hack the planet! Whoa, what's all this? 
this guy's signal, override. Um, oh, choose a hacker reward. Override, that's what we want, right? Uh, okay. Oh, so I have a 100% chance to unlock it, but I have a 6% chance to get disguise signals or override is 2%. So we'll just do this, whatever. Hacking the planet. That's about it. Success, doors unlocked. That's actually kind of cool. That way you get extra like bonuses and stuff. They really thought this out. Central, get in there. Is this our cloning machine type deal? This looks really cool, I have to say. This is the place. Why wouldn't you think there'd be guys inside of there though? What is this? Wait. Is this the is this me like the commander from the first game that they're like freeing and that's how everything starts? Looks like there is an access panel attached. If you got me a better look, I might be able to Oh. Next time. Oh, I'm totally betting that that's you the the player is right there and you're rescuing yourself so you can start the whole deal. Cuz they captured you at the end of Get out of here. XCOM 1 if you lost or whatever if you didn't save the world. Oh. Sorry, that's me trying to get the cursor out of the way. Okay, soldiers can carry unconscious and dead and bleeding out units. This allows a soldier to retrieve a fallen comrade. Cool. Oh, this is really thought out. I'm loving this. Carry unit. Oh, this is really cool. But if this is such a high profile guy why would it be in the middle of the of the city for no reason you know oh he's gonna die peter no batar no oh man he had a name and everything <laughs> why is he dead okay let's try the back door Come on, Kelly. Let's get out of here. Got it Why isn't there, like, scientists and junk in here? Or, like, a robot protector guy? Throw a grenade there. Grenades uh, are not as lethal as fire items, but can damage multiple units and destroy cover and walls. That's actually cool. Before, I don't think they could destroy cover. If they could, it was only, like, certain things. But that is, like, a huge ass, you know, like, wall broken. The only thing I can remember that actually destroyed barriers and stuff like that was, uh... Soldiers can still attack. Am I attacking? Why can't I move? Oh, it wants me to go the whole way. Okay, cool, 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 cool. But the only thing that could in XCOM 1 was if you have an alien gun that shot plasma or something, then it would destroy, like, uh, certain barriers and walls and stuff. So, that's kind of cool that you actually have the option to just blow stuff up with explosives, for example, that you couldn't do in the first one. Oh, oh, oh! You lucked out, girl. Throw a grenade! Again. Yeah, no, seriously. Oh, 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 no, he took down to one pip health. Okay. We need immediate evac. Get us out of here. Press P to place evac zone here. Oh, I can actually choose where to evac now. That's kind of cool. Okay. So, press P. This is actually a really intense uh, uh, tutorial mission. The other one was like, oh no, we lost contact with like a bank. Go check it out. Oh, aliens exist. This is interesting. What's this? I didn't read what that was. We're coming home. Okay. Oh yeah, we already did that. This is 
really thought out, and I like it. I know before it was just trying to copy the original like 2D one from the 90s or whatever. This was actually really cool. This is like some brown coat Rebel Alliance shit going on right now. We're basically a terrorist cell. <laughs> we really are. What's that? Oh. What is all that? Is that an outsider? In the first game, there was an outsider who was made of like pure energy who would just like show up inside the ship as like a security thing. Did we take over Area 51 and make that like our base or something? <laughs> Out in the middle of the desert. Oh, wow. The game looks nice though. I just wish the frame rates weren't as crazy, but. Yeah, no, that's totally your character from the first game. <laughs> that's totally your character from the first game. So were they like cloning us, or like what, what's the deal there? Oh uh, yeah, no, that is the commander from it. Yeah, that's him with the with the thing. Okay. We had no idea what was coming. <laughs> Response from the cerebral cortex. Good. Prepping for cranial intrusion. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's one of those men in black type guys that we had to fight. I've managed to identify the connection. Preparing to make final incision. Oh. The readings are getting really erratic. Of course they are. These implants were never designed to be removed. We are risking severe... No plan B here, people. Do that... The doctor guy sounds familiar. I wonder who his voice actor is. Oh. Oh. Oh, so this is how we lost the game, eh? <laughs> I won the game, though, so... This is not my future. You can quote me from uh, X Men, that new X Men movie, Days of Future Past. I don't want your future. I wonder if that's what's gonna, the end of the game's gonna be. Is is uh, you going back in time and saving the day? Nice. Call that shit. I'm liking where the story's going now. Now we're basically the Rebel Alliance. <laughs> Still, can't fault Dr. Tigan. Especially as no one's even attempted something like this before. Okay. Easy. We're still not entirely sure what they did to you. That chip was buried halfway into your skull. Hmm. Lost a lot of good soldiers looking for you over the years. Oh, there's the old crew. I could, but the last 20 years have been tough without you. 20 years? I feel like catching up. Shen has the archive up and running on your terminal. Otherwise, I'd go see Dr. Tigan when you're ready. There's some things you should know. We'll be better at explaining. That's kind of cool, though. I like how they introduced everything. Everything was kind of action-y. This, I like the feel of this new game compared to the last one. The last one's more like you're part of the shadow government's like response. This one's like, no, you guys are underground. Like, straight up underground. Alright. Yeah, I ain't doing that. Okay. Yeah, no. This was cool. Okay. I've seen some of the changes. I know there's a lot more changes than that. But this game is, has, is really interesting. And... I think I would recommend this so far to uh, XCOM 1 players. If they liked XCOM 1, they'll love this because there's a lot of new changes to... It is a true sequel in the fact that not only does it happen after XCOM 1, 
but they took what they did with XCOM 1 and added on to it instead of it just being a rehashing. Um, kind of like some other games out there where they just kind of take the same thing and then they just uh, animate a new story and then that's it. And then they have to take all your powers away after the first 10 minutes of it. I'm looking at you, Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Even though you, you learned everything from the last game. So this one, it's kind of cool. The, you know, Earth has gone to shit. Aliens took over. Uh, you, to the armory. you as the commander has been on ice for the past 20 years. And now you woke up and you got to relearn everything. Not because the game took it away from you, but because it's been 20 years. You don't know what's happened. I don't even know what's happened this far. But the plot so far is very interesting. I like the feel of it. The whole underground... Got a, a plan your attack type deal. Being able to call in uh, your way out. Being able to ambush. So I think as far as new players go, I think I would recommend playing XCOM 1 first. Just, uh, just so you can kind of get acquainted more with the basics of it. I mean, the tutorial is great. It's going to teach you everything anyways. Um, but I think I would probably recommend playing XCOM 1 first just to... It's kind of like playing Mass Effect 1 and then playing Mass Effect 2. They're completely different as far as mechanics go, but having played Mass Effect 1, you kind of know better on how things are going to work. To the research lab. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> You'll kind of know better how things work and uh, how the mechanics work, although the mechanics have changed since then, but... It's more like going to first grade before going to second grade. That's the best way to say it. Now, does that mean that new players, people who've never played XCOM 1, would not enjoy XCOM 2? I disagree. I think they would have a fun fun time as well. Uh, I would still recommend playing XCOM 1 just because it, it looks like it's going to be a series. XCOM 3 might come out and it'll be whatever happens after the end of this one or something like that, you know? So, kind of like playing Mass Effect 1... You're kind of lost going to Mass Effect 2. It's like, okay, who are these people? How do I know them? You know? But I honestly, if you're going to play XCOM 1, you just need to play like two or three missions and then you got the gist of it. Yeah, this one looks like it's going to be continually evolving as you go. That isn't to say the, in XCOM 1 it doesn't evolve. It does evolve, but it usually evolves over what tech you have. Not necessarily what uh, tactics you come up or what new technologies might change the game it happens a couple of times in XCOM 1 but it seems like with XCOM 2 so far because you're basically reverse engineering the alien technology there's a lot more that that can happen like well for example in XCOM 1 if someone was bleeding out you'd have to have a uh, a med kit to restore them and look this one looks like if they're bleeding out near the end of your mission you can just pick them up and put them on the skybird and they'll live at least <laughs> they'll still have to recover but i don't know it's, it's just i really like the feel of this is it going to stand up to XCOM 1 from a few years ago i think it'll do better than that that's just my guess would I recommend people to go out and buy it for the full price? Definitely. And if you go on Steam or uh, was it Green Man Gaming or whatever, a couple of the other you know digital sites, I'm pretty sure they got sales for XCOM One. And if if it's out, I'd grab it just to try it out. Uh, but if you've seen this video and you just want to jump into XCOM Two, go for it. So far, it's a lot of fun. It's very interesting. I like the atmosphere and the feel of the game. Um, my only real complaints is the erratic frame rates, which will probably be taken care of in a, a bug patch here or there. Um, but so far it looks very intriguing, and I'd recommend it. So, if you've played it and you disagree or you have other things that you would like to put on it, put it in a comment below. Uh, that way I can see it as well as others. Please no spoilers to the end of the game, though. But saying, hey, I like this, or it's very buggy after the tutorial mission, which is all I've done. Go ahead and post something like that. Or even your thoughts of whether or not you like the game or not. Or if you thought XCOM 1 nailed it and they didn't need a 2. Or why did we even have 1? Why didn't we just start at 2? Whatever you want, just post a comment. Like this video if you found it informative. And subscribe for more videos. Take care, everybody, and have a great day.